Do what you've been coached to do, what you know how to do, and play with incredible effort every snap. Sure, sure. Hey, and for you seniors, make it one you'll never forget. Let's go. Everybody got right, it. Right, let's, right, let's get out there. Let's go. 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 let us Please tune in to YouTube to watch us every week. We'll air on Wednesdays. And also, please tune in to the NFHS Network on Fridays if you can't make it to the game and watch our broadcast there. Coach, we want to thank our sponsors. That's why we're on the air. Uh, Life Church, Agency on Main, Marmac Commercial Real Estate, Peck Funeral Home, Eddie Pruitt Ford, uh, Express Bath is a new sponsor this year, and Coleman Regional Hospital. Um, well, we're 2-1, and one, and I love beating Coleman. We were, Jace and I were talking about that in our player uh, interview. And But before we begin, uh, what can you say about the atmosphere at that game? I mean, I looked around, there was not a seat. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was it was lined up all the way around the stadium. Yeah, yeah, and we needed it. I mean, you know, you need it financially. Um, that's important <laughs> uh, for the whole deal. But, no, nah, just the community support. And, uh, you know, they have support, too. They travel well. And when you get those big gates and big games, they have quite, you know, the visiting stands is packed as well. And. Uh, our people were there early. You know, we we opened the gates a little bit earlier. Mr. Bale and his crew were there. Uh, Miss Bale were there early, um, opening the gates for people to come on in, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So warm ups were pretty crowded and packed, and and uh, it was good. So just just excited, you know, excited to see that and appreciative of it. Well, there's a lot of pregame energy, and one thing that I noticed that we we haven't talked about here that's new this season is the Tiger Tailgate. Yep. Um, it's you know if you want to tell everybody about the opportunities yeah. that are available. Yeah. So. We, we have 10 spots available. I think we sold six of them. And basically people, we if you've been to Auburn, Alabama games, they set up your tailgate for you. So uh, it's a white tent and table. Um, and we've got some coaches that set that up and take it down so it makes it easy. And it's a spot that not everybody can get to. You know, people can tailgate otherwise, but it's not like this. It's not being right there, you know, in the courtyard right at the intermediate school. Thanks to Ms. Sheets for letting us use that. Um, but it's been a cool deal. I mean, I just think it adds to the environment and people are cooking and uh, having a good time. And uh, I know my wife, Lindsay, took a picture of all the kids that were there. There was like 30 or 40 kids there playing. And that's what you want. It's what it's about. And you're creating an experience. So like for us, it's not just a football game. It's, you know, making people want to come to Hartzell and, and little guys want to play football at Hartzell. You know, I think that's really important. And I think it adds to that. It's going to grow. Yeah, no doubt. It's going to be awesome. But uh, if you're interested in any of those yeah. opportunities, just reach out to him or to me through the social media, yeah, and we'll absolutely. make sure to hook you up. Yep. Um, you played a rivalry game in a short week. So did you change anything about how you guys practiced? Because, I mean, Labor Day, you, you practiced, but it was Labor Day. Yeah, right. And mainly, I don't know that everybody's working on Labor Day. I mean, you, yeah. you guys may have been, but yeah. well, <laughs> I always we, checked out. <laughs> we did take Sunday off um, last week with the kids. The coaches worked. Um, but we normally the kids come in and work out and that sort of thing. So we're behind. I mean, you know, when you think about it, like we missed a lift. And so we had to lift on Monday. We just didn't cut into film time and, and walk through and prep time. So it does affect your week. But I thought it was important. Like the older I've gotten, the longer I've done it, the more I understand the, the value of rest and having some, some uh, time to decompress mentally and – um, you know, we've been at it since, uh, what, early August. And so we've been a month straight of basically six days a week is how we operate. And so that's a lot. And so giving the kids off, I thought was important. I thought we had a good week of practice. Um, and, and, we, and we grew. You know, last week I made the statement, you know, I didn't think we were progressing fast enough. And I still think there's a lot to do. I mean, especially offensively early in that ballgame, we did not play well. Um, they had kind of a different plan. And so it took us a little while to settle in. But I thought um, I thought our kids were mentally fresh. I thought that was really important. And I did think that uh, we did grow. And so I thought that was our biggest step forward. You know, usually it's week one to two, but this year it seemed to be two to three. And that's okay, too. Um, but I thought our kids grew and got a lot better. So it was uh, it really from midway through the second quarter on, it was a pretty dominant performance. That's good. All right, we're going to take a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. Jenny Tankersley. I'm Dwight Tankersley. And I'm Rajane Hampton, and we're your agency on Maine. Local realtors here to serve you. One of our team members will be more than happy to find you that perfect home. Go Tigers!
Come see us at Eddie Pruitt Ford. We're a proud supporter of Hartzell Athletics. All right, we're back with the Coach Brian Moore Show. Coach, let's talk about offensive performance. Uh, we broke 400 yards offensively for the first time this yep. season. Um, was that a, a bigger accomplishment than the defensive shutout, or are we just going to call it? Well, I thought I thought it was very complimentary, though. You know, they got um, we got some short fields out of the defense, um, created three turnovers again for the third straight week. I think that's a massive number. Um, nine turnovers in three weeks, I'll take it. And uh, so that was big. So there were some short fields, so it helped, it helped us put up some points. Um, we did have some quick strikes and finally some explosive plays. We got Ryan explosive down the sideline. We threw a double pass with Lincoln to Noah. Uh, and then obviously the, the, the post ball to Marcus was huge. Something that we've been searching for last year, we struggled with a little bit, you know, getting Isaiah um, loose down there and hitting him and landing through it right in stride. And I think, I think that was big for Marcus. And you're starting to see the emergence of Marcus a little bit here, you know, as far as, you know, he's so big and um, he's legit 6'6 and weighs 200 pounds. And so, and even he affects the game even when he doesn't touch it. So, like, there was a play, the last play of the game, another explosive, the last play of the half, I should say, another explosive to Lincoln um, was because Marcus was double covered. So, it ISOed Lincoln up with the safety and he beat him. Great throw by Landon again. So, we're finding ourselves now a little bit offensively as far as who can do what, what is their skill set like. I wish we'd have known all this stuff at Austin, you know, <laughs> uh, but you just don't. It's just a progression with us, too, as far as how we call the game and you know, how we prepare and the plays that we set up and what kids can actually do. You know, we're playing a lot more kids and then we're specializing what their skill set is. But, I mean, obviously a huge accomplishment back to your question as far as the shutout. Um, but, again, I thought the 400 yards was, was big and I thought we threw the ball better than we have all year. His quarterback rating was up. It was up. Yep. Um, 4.2 yards per carry. Now, yep. what when I was looking at that, that's the lowest we've had all year. Yeah, yep. That was the lowest of the three games. Yep. However, it eyeball test here, it looked like we ran the ball better. Yeah, we, we just had some negatives in there. We had uh, two sacks in the game, which affect your rushing yard. So right. that was that was a little bit of it. I guess if you took those two negatives out, then it was okay, probably over five a carry if you take those two out. So it wasn't terrible. Um, took us a little while to get going. Um, you know, we Jalen Grissom is still out. Um, and so uh, Braden Huckabee got a start in there at right guard. And uh, so we're still kind of mixing and matching up front too. Um, I thought having Stennett and Chandler for a full game, Stennett got poked in the eye against uh, uh, Jackson Olin and so missed the second half. So, But getting a little more continuity up there. But I thought overall the running game was better. Well, and uh, Lincoln Bryant, we talked yep. about him a little bit. But can you remember when at last game when a running back threw for a touchdown <laughs> and caught a touchdown, yep. but he's a running back. Yep. Uh, what can you, what can you say He's very that? versatile. You know, we've, we've worked that double pass for a couple of years, and we didn't run it any last year. The year before, we did run it a couple of times. We always run it with Knight or JV. We, you know, we, we use that a little bit, but he's got a great arm, and so we joke about it because we took it from Rye. You know, Rye wants to throw it, but I didn't let him because Lincoln throws <laughs> it a little better than Rye. And, uh, but I thought he overthrew it. Right when the ball was in flight, Noah was kind of spinning circles and uh, hung up there forever, but great job of adjusting to that, that and finishing it. But I thought that was – I thought that play, as far as the spark offensively, and then the sack by Jace Pruitt. Um, I know we'll get to that, but the sack by Jace Pruitt, I thought those were the kind of the two turning points in the game. Well, and then I, I want to go back to that trick play because, you know, I, I talked to some of the players and, and I happen to know a couple of coaches, and you're kind of hesitant for trick oration. Yeah. And you've whipped that out first half. Yeah. So do you think that was the catalyst that, you know, kind of – were you doing that to jumpstart your team and yeah. just kind of motivate them? I know that they loved it. Yeah, Kids we're talking about and, and we're going to have to do a little bit more of that, you know, to create. Again, last year we just didn't have to. You know, you throw a curl to Eli and he goes 70 yards, or you throw an out route to Isaiah and he goes down the sideline for 60. I mean, that's pretty easy offense, you know. But this year we're having to manufacture more of that, and so we've got to be a little bit more creative. Um, against Austin, the last play of the game, we talked about throwing it then. And I just kind of I, I felt good about it, but I just didn't want to take it out of our kids' hands. And then the other night, Will said, what do you think? And I said, do it. Just do it. Uh, typically, if it's a play like that, they'll kind of go through the, um, you know, they'll go kind of go through me on the headset, you know, and say, what do you think? And, you know, because it's, it's on me. You know, if it doesn't work and we 
uh, throw it over his head and it's a fumble and they scoop and score, maybe that's a different ball game. So there's a lot riding on a, situ uh, a decision like that. And so I don't want to put that on those guys. I want to put it on me, you know, and take the pressure off of them, so to speak. But really good decision right there from Will. You know, we talked about it, went with it, we executed. And I think we have a team that can. You know, we have a lot of guys that can throw and catch and handle the football with Noah Lee playing receiver. Right. It opens up some options for us to use him with double pass or reverse passes and stuff. I don't want to go crazy with it, you know. We're not going to lose who we are and the fundamentals of what we need to be. But we'll do that again if we feel like we need a spark and I felt like in the second quarter we did. Gosh, that was fun. All right, we'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. All right, welcome back to the Coach Brian Moore Show. I'm here with our Player of the Week, Jace Pruitt. Jace, great effort, nine tackles, I believe. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that was that was awesome against Coleman. I love to beat Coleman. Love beating Coleman. Yes, All right, so uh, first question: favorite moment so far this season? And when I when I say that, it doesn't have to be playing the game. It could be right. preseason, could be seven on seven, whatever y'all are doing. It's probably beating Coleman. Always <laughs> love to beat Coleman, especially forty two to zero. That's awesome. Well, I'm doing it. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um. um if you could play another position, because I know you play baseball, but like in football, mm -hmm. if you could play something else, what would you want to play? Probably a receiver. My dad was a receiver in high school, so I'd probably get probably get some tips from him. Get the get the Jason okay. Pruitt going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's probably still playing in his mind. He, he's still good enough to go, I guarantee. <laughs> um, what part of your game do you want to improve the most? We always got to – we're working to get That's better. That's right. So what probably you... finishing plays. Okay. Going up to the uh, – the pile and hitting it instead of just watching it, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, I've heard you were a hard hitter anyway, so um, okay. A little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. All right. Now this one, I love the answer to this question. It's who on the team has the best drip? <laughs> the best drip. Uh -huh, and I want to know your opinion because I've, I've already gotten a couple of them. So. Okay. Were we talking about on the field or just in general? Uh, well, see, I thought it was off the field. Uh -huh. And so when I told some of my students, it was. On, um, off the field, and they were like, "No, if someone said it does not. He wears socks and sandals, and because Cole Miles <laughs> said it was him, just straight up. Yeah. They're like, he is on the field, maybe, but off you the field. You got some drip no. on the field. But I'm saying are... off the field is okay. me. I got the shoe game. <laughs> I'm not wearing any Jordans today, but I usually am. Okay, what about on the field? On the field, you got to give it to Cole, uh, maybe uh, Drake. Okay. What well, now? Drake was mentioned. Uh, Porter did mention him. Or Noah Gibson. Noah Gibson's up there. Okay. Noah Gibson, that's the new one. We're going to keep a tally, okay? There you go. Um, favorite part of practice, last question. Probably a V drill. And what it's is like, that? It's the most physical. It's like a tackling drill, pretty much. Okay. All right. Now, you're you're one of the few that has not answered the drill to get dessert. Right. That's a good one. And it was, see, everybody's like, oh, man, I forgot about that one. So, yeah, uh -huh. usually it's fighting for dessert. Well, Jace Pruitt, you you've been a great interview, and we thank you. Good luck this week against Columbia. Thanks. You're watching the Coach Brown Moore Show. This is Shane Odom with Marmac Commercial Real Estate. We approach real estate with our three I approach, integrity, intelligence, and innovation. To be your full service real estate company that can handle all your real estate needs from commercial, such as warehouse, retail, apartments, to land, farms, residential developments, along with houses, such as investment homes or your dream home. Marmac Commercial Real Estate has over 15 years experience providing award-winning, full-service real estate experience. One team, endless possibilities. Marmac Commercial Real Estate. All right, we're back with the Coach Brian Moore Show. I'm here with defensive coordinator Bert Newton and Coach. First shutout of the season. What can you say about your guys? They played really, really well. Um, I can't remember a time when the defense kind of just played, came together and played as good as they did. Um, it's almost everything was happening right. And then when it gets Coleman, yeah, that makes it even, even better. It's kind of special. So, um, anyway, huge win for us. And defense played great. And, um, you know, we scored 43 points. Offense played pretty good, too, now. Yeah, they did. They did. Well, seven of them or six of them were yours. Well. You got, you got Peyton Steele. 
We got a defense that we got a pick six. Um, based on the stats, um, our or what I looked at, it looked like offensive uh, offensive. We're talking defensive questions right now. Um, defensive line did better. We had better penetration at the line. Do you think that they are growing? I mean, we had a lot more sacks. We had more sacks in this game than we have in the other. I thought that uh, our D line played really, really well. Um, you know, Porter had a big game again. Um, Christian's playing great. Uh, Andrew, you know, it, I think he was nervous at first going against his former teammates and all that kind of stuff with the Coleman deal, but uh, he ended up being fine too. And and uh, Jackson Falciani is a stand up defensive lineman, which I've still not used to on film. So why is he standing up? But anyway. Um, <laughs> Well, we had, they had a good night. That's awesome. Um, and we covered this a little bit last week, but I want to kind of go over it again because we're playing Columbia. It's going to be, unless the wheels fall off the bus, it should be a pretty easy win. Your starters will probably be cheerleaders in the second half. That being said, how do you maintain that intensity and keep that level that you're keeping it at? Because you know, and we talked about this last week, the next four weeks are gonna, you're going to get smacked in the mouth. Mm-hmm. So, so what are you all doing this week? Like, are you working on on it on your side on practice, or what? What are we doing? To- I, the big focus we told them this morning. Um, you know, this is all about us. It's not about Columbia or even the next four weeks. But they know. I mean, they're not. They're not. Our kids are smart, and they know that we're we're about to go through a, a tough run of some non-region games, and then you know, Muscle Shoals and all that, and Athens, and and and. But they they know. But it's this week is about us getting better. Um, you know, we're working. You know, against us, ones on ones as much as we can today, and and trying to get better. Um. For the future. Uh, And let's talk about Jace Pruitt. He's your Eddie Pruitt Ford. And yes, that that is his grandson. (laughs) Um, Player of the week. And that's not why he is. He was because he had, I think it was, let's see, nine tackles, a sack, and a broken up pass. Uh, So he did okay. He did. And he had had one of the the hardest hits on the quarterback I've had in a long time. Like, he came off the edge and planted that guy and almost, like, put a stamp on the end of it. Like, the the next play, the quarterback didn't want to throw it. He, He, off his back foot throw it up I don't want to get hit and so um Jace has really come on his way room work and just I mean so proud of him it's it, anyway yeah he, he had a great night the other night like a really good night uh, coach was you know he always wants to talk about who's gonna be the captain next week and so my coach there's like nine guys but Jace Pruitt number one um but and there's nine guys that could be captain which is a pretty special week there for you know our defense so um yeah, super proud of all of them. But Jace had a unbelievable ball game. So he's I mean, the the defense is is working the way you want them to. We're growing. We're we're doing what needs to be done in order to get to where you want them. At the we are. But as soon as I say that, we're going to go we're going to go backwards. We're going to go backwards against Columbia, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and I don't want to dismiss Columbia. I know it's hard to suit a bunch of uh, kids out there and get them to fight hard. And you know, you're kind of with a struggling program. I understand that. But um, when you you know compare apples to oranges there is, is kind of what it is you know you got the history here and but they do have a pretty big roster this time so i'm going to talk to coach more about that they've grown their roster they have it on online. They, they have more kids out and then um you know they have some huge offensive linemen uh, i was turning the film um this weekend and i was a little bit shocked but um i think as long as we line up and play hard and we'll be fine this this friday and um like i said it's all about us and getting better and not about who we're playing absolutely all right thanks coach newton we'll be right back you're watching the coach brian Moore show Peck Funeral Home is owned and operated by folks who live in the same communities they serve. Our employees are the heart of our business. The Funeral Home proudly employs over 30 local individuals. Currently, the Funeral Home is managed by Jeff Halbrooks, who has held that position for over 20 years. Our goal is simple and has remained the same now since 1929. Peck Funeral Home strives to provide genuine service from the heart. All right, we're back with Coach Brian Moore. And, Coach, I do want to talk about Columbia. Let's talk about them first, and then I want to talk about our player of the game and yep. his performance. And I don't want to – you know, I'm kind of, I know you're kind of offensive-minded. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but we've had three defensive guys in a row. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. I know. <laughs> hey, I'm waiting for that I moment. Need, I need to call the other player I know and, and yeah. tell him. So I'm waiting, you know, yeah, waiting no on doubt. the line to get interviewed up no here. No doubt. But uh, we're playing Columbia. They're not a juggernaut. Uh you know you're you're going to be playing lots of guys. What can what can you say about them? They got a lot more guys out. They do. They do have a lot more. Um, they have a new coach this year, and so I've gotten to speak with him a couple of times, and um, he's trying to grow the program. You know, it's never been a like within their school. It's never been an athleticism issue. You know, if you look at their basketball team, or they're, they're good. Usually, they're a playoff team, and they've got players. And he's trying to get some of those guys out, and it looks like they have. I mean, they're up to 35 or 40 kids, which is up from 
17, you know, uh, or maybe not coming to play or something like that. So uh, they got a big right tackle. They're better physically than we've seen. Um, they're still searching to put it all together, but they are better physically. Um, we need to go play well, not just because of them, but because it's another step as we get close, as we all know, to the stretch run right here, right. Um, which really eats up all at home, but it really eats up. So we need to play well. And we're not a team, I mentioned this last week, that can in any way, shape, or form sit back and just relax. You know, none really can, but this one, especially with youth, they don't understand that yet. You know, they don't understand yeah. that, you know, hey, you know, we, we've got to continue to play and press and get better because of what's coming down the road. So, you know, I hope we play well. Um, you know, I know our people will travel and all that that deal, and it won't be a bad trip. We're going to eat pregame here and then go on the road um, and uh, hopefully play well. Okay, and I did want this question just popped into my mind because I heard, I've heard some uh, different opinions. Uh, we were scheduled to play Milton Frank. Yep. And we're still scheduled. To, it, I had heard we might move to Joe Davis because it's the new stadium yep. and all that. And I knew that might be in the works, but yep. we're still at Milton, Milton Frank, Frank, 7 o'clock okay. Friday night. Okay. So normal day. Milton Frank, everybody. Yep. Um, and I'll make sure we post that on the socials and get that out to everybody. Thank you. Yeah, there. there's been a lot of confusion there. But I know that Joe Davis is super nice and people had That's recommended right. playing there. So. Okay. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's uh, it's neat. Um, but anyway, let's talk about Jace Pruitt, uh, player of the yep. game. Third defensive player. I'm just going to say that one time. Third defensive player <laughs> of the game. Um Man, he can hit. Yeah, he's he is really – I mean, we said it. He was kind of, for me, the the player to watch, you know, through the offseason. Um, had a great year, lifted hard. Got He's gotten big and he's gotten physical. And, you know, and then Cole was here, you know, a few a couple weeks ago. And those two guys are mirror images of each other. They're six one and long and athletic. And uh, they do different things. Their position is different. So, Jace is to the field. He's the spur. And Cole's to the boundary. He's the rover. And we use those guys interchangeably. They're a hybrid version of what would be like an – you've asked me that before, an outside backer, a spur rover. What is that? An outside backer slash safety. And so, he's in the run fit a lot. And so, the play of the game to me was uh, we, we seen edge pressure. But normally, Jace is the wide rusher. But Coach looped him through. And uh, he got a clean shot on the cue. And I, I think it impacted that guy for the rest of the game. The kid was tough to get up from all those shots. But – that really set the tone. It happened so fast. He never broke stride, hit him full speed, clean hit, you know, great tackle. Um, and I thought that was very impactful because we sort of frenzied up. You know, on defense, it's kind of like sharks in the water a little bit. You know, right. once things start to happen, you know, they, they smell that blood and here we go. And so they, they really did that Friday more than ever. I thought that was the most physical we've ever been since I've been here. I thought we got after him. I thought we dominated uh, the line of scrimmage on both sides. And I thought we tackled extremely well. We had so many negative plays and pass breakups and breaks on the ball, and we knocked several footballs off of them. Even ones that were caught incomplete were close to where we knocked – Jay Lee knocked one out. Josh Pruitt really forced a fumble on a kickoff that they, they called down. Um, but just really getting to the football, uh, he made a ton of plays in the game. And that was a fumble. We, we were looking at uh, the photographer stand around us, yeah. and uh, Joe Ed Tankersley is watching us today, and they uh, showed us that, yeah, yeah it was indeed. Yep. Hey, a sideline coach just called it. No doubt. <laughs> uh, let's do the Eddie Pruitt-Ford fan question okay. of the week. Uh, Dana, I wrote that in to me this morning. She said, I was a great win Friday. This week, I hope, is an easy one. How do you prepare to play 48 minutes for the upcoming games? Because, you know, they, you talk about that complete game's your goal. Yeah, and we hadn't had to do that. In our two wins, we've been able to sub and get kids in, and um, we won't be able to do that here shortly. You know, right. it's going to take all 48. And, um, you know, I think we're in better shape now, and, you know, it's really tough. Obviously, it was so hot against Austin. But, like I said, I, I mentioned after that game, I thought we were fine. I thought we played – it was obvious. I mean, we scored – uh, 10 points in the fourth quarter and had a chance to win the game and just didn't finish. But I thought our kids were fine. And so I'm really encouraged by that. I, I want to shout out to um, talking about that to Jared Holly, our strength coach. I mean, I thought you look at Coleman and you look at us and we're very similar. Right. Like our kids look a lot alike, you know, and um, but I thought we were stronger than them. I thought that we uh, we won that battle again, the physicality battle. And, and, and that goes to him. That goes to him. You know, Coach Holly training those kids from the time they're seventh graders up. Uh, and he works his tail off. He works so many groups. It's unbelievable how many kids he trains a day. I would think upper, upwards of 300 kids per day wow. that he works out in Hartzell. And so he's really raising young men. It's not, just, it's not just physical toughness and strength. It's mental prep, too. You know, the ability to go get another squat when you're tired. It, that all weighs in. And they, they're going to do that with him for six straight years, you know. And so I really thought that physically um, it was the first time. You know, we, we've held up in games. Last year – playing Oxford and Gas City and all those, we held up physically. But I thought for the first time Friday night, we dominated the strength part of that game 
and against a team that, again, a city and everything that's similar to ours. A lot. And the type of player. And I, I just am really proud of that group. I'm really proud of the kids for responding. You know, we, we eat like crazy and feed them like crazy. And, you know, a lot of people wonder, why do we pour all this money into nutrition and all this stuff? It's for that, you know, so that our kids – you don't look out there and they weigh 150 pounds anymore. They're 175, 180 pounds at outside linebacker. They're 230 like Jake – I mean, 215 like Jake Haynes in the middle. They're, you know, 230 like Porter at end. I mean, that's what you want to see and, and just props to him for that. So, I was really excited about that. That's great. Well, hopefully we'll have a good week this week and we'll be back next week with the Coach Brian Moore Show. Okay. All right, and this week in Hartsville High Athletics, let's start Wednesday, September 13th. Ninth grade volleyball is going to go to James Clemens. On Thursday, September the 14th, busy day for Hartsville High Athletics. Volleyball is going to host uh, – Col- let's start over again. And this week in Hartsville High Athletics, we're going to start with Wednesday, September 13th. Ninth grade volleyball is going to travel to James Clemens. And on Thursday, September 14th, we're going to have a pretty busy day. Um, volleyball is going to host Coleman. The junior high football team is going to Athens, and junior high volleyball will go to Muscle Shoals. On Friday, we're all going to go. I hope a big crowd shows up at Milton Frank Stadium to watch our Tigers take on Columbia. Saturday, cross country is at the Foley Invitational. Swimming is in Gunnersville, And volleyball is going to host the Eddie Pruitt Tournament here at the high school. So after you check out Depot Days, drop on by the volleyball tournament. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of great action. On Monday, September the 18th, we have the homecoming kickoff here at 6 o'clock in the auditorium. Should be a great night. We've got homecoming week against Gasden City. But also, ninth grade volleyball is going to travel to Curry on that Monday. Tuesday, the junior high volleyball is going to host Huntsville and Muscle Shoals. Football, uh, the junior high, again, is going to host Florence. And the volleyball team is going to travel to Austin, and that's high school volleyball. That's this week in Hartsville High Athletics.